Aside from being one of the most talked about documentaries of 2019, Honeyland was a three-year process in the making, directed by Tamara Kotovska and Lyudmyr Stefanov. The film follows the simple life of a local beekeeper named Hatizi, residing in the mountains of Macedonia, where she cares for her ailing mother and a hive of bees. Her peaceful life is soon disrupted after a couple moves in next door along with their seven rambunctious children. Desperate for more money, Sam, the father, becomes interested in Hatizi's way of beekeeping. At first, the pair work well together as Hatizi teaches him the proper and traditional way of beekeeping. But chaos erupts as Sam's improper way of beekeeping interferes with Hatizi's livelihood. The documentary is an honest tale of love and greed that will leave its audience even more aware of the effect that humans have on the natural world around us. The first thing I wanted to cover is the overall structure of the documentary. For the most part, Honeyland is loosely structured. Rather than relying mainly on blatant introductions and interviews with the subjects of the film, the film focuses more on their everyday lives. Actually, none of the characters are introduced in an interview form where they state their names and what their purpose in the film is, nor do the characters ever address that the cameras are even there, except for maybe an occasional glance. It wasn't until halfway through the documentary where I learned the woman beekeeper's name was Hatizi. The directors wanted Honeyland to feel like a slice of life, allowing the audience to become immersed in a world that is so far removed from their own, which I believe paid off in the end. One thing I did note about the structure is the cyclical style of the film. The film opens with Hatizi scaling a mountain, a process she does to see how the hive that exists on a ledge is holding up. After she is done, she retreats down the mountain and returns to her home. At the end of the film, when it seems all hope is lost, Hatizi returns to the mountain she once visited to find that the bees on the ledge are still alive and well, providing hope for a new future that she believed was lost. Another aspect I noticed was the changing of the seasons. Though this documentary was filmed over the span of three years, the film beginning in spring and ending in winter felt intentional. The documentary starts in spring, a season known for its bounty. This is the point in the film where Hatizi's bees are thriving and her mother is still in her life. By the time winter falls in the end of the film, Hatizi is left without any bees after her hives were ravaged by Sam's bees. Her mother, who she has been caring for in her old age, has also passed away and she is left completely alone. Intentional or not, the contrast between the fruitful spring and the desolate winter played nicely with the events that were occurring in Hatizi's world. The cinematography of the documentary was also extremely notable. Besides being beautiful, it was also wildly immersive. In an interview, Samir Lajuma talked about the reason why he chose to have most of the sequences be shot in a fly-on-the-wall style. He wanted to give the documentary an intimate feel using a direct cinema style, which made it feel as if the viewers were there themselves. Since the story is so personal, I think choosing this style to film in worked well with the context of the film. Shots like Hatizi pouring honey onto the camera lens make for a viewing experience that throws the audience into the day-to-day life of a small-town beekeeper, which I thought made for a better connection to the characters on screen. Another aspect of the cinematography was the use of extreme wide shots juxtaposed with the use of extreme close-ups. In many shots, like the opening shot of the film, the cinematographer chose to have them be extreme wide shots. In these shots, the subject always looked extremely small, while the surrounding area took up the rest of the screen. Directly after a shot like that, it would be followed up with a close-up of Hachizi going about her day, completing her daily tasks. I believe this tactic was used to show how even though she is just a singular person living in a vast world where her story is seemingly so insignificant, the close-up shots make us realize that her entire world exists in this small town and for these small bees. By having such intimate shots, we end up caring for this woman as if she were our own friend, which I would believe is exactly what the directors wanted by the end of the film. The last thing I wanted to talk about was this allegory of greed that was present throughout the film. We've seen it in plenty of films like The Lorax, and I actually found myself comparing this film a lot to The Lorax because I found it interesting how much real life can parallel fictional cinema. Nature is existing peacefully. Nature is disrupted and nature is finally restored in the end. In this case, Hatizi is the Lorax, a caring and dedicated soul whose life purpose is to help others rather than herself. Throughout the duration of the film, we only see Hatizi care for herself once when she dyes her hair. Other than that, 
all of her energy is put into others. She sings to the bees when she collects them to earn their trust. She leaves them with half of their honeycomb so they do not become upset. Everything she does, she does for the well-being of the bees. Though money is a reward for her work, it is not her main purpose for pursuing beekeeping. When Sam comes into town with his family, he is quite the opposite, much like the Wunzler. He does not view the bees as something to be respected like Hatizi does. He curses at them when they sting him and eventually must turn to Hatizi for guidance. At first, he listens to her when she tells him that he must leave half of the honeycomb for the bees or else they will become upset. But when he realizes it is not getting him the amount of money he desires, he begins taking all of the honeycomb, going directly against her words. The greed of the antagonist ends in the downfall of an entire ecosystem. When he removes all the honeycomb, the bees tear apart Hatizi's beehive, leaving her with no other choice than to confront him. But he doesn't listen. His bees swarm her hive again, killing what was left of her hive. But greed comes with consequences. Sam's mistreatment of the bees has left him with nothing but bees who will no longer produce honey, and his family is forced to leave their property. I believe this allegory is an important lesson to be taught. It shows that if you give to nature, it will in turn give back to you. But if you deprive nature of its resources, you'll be left with nothing in the end. This documentary goes to show that consumerism can lead to the downfall of a once thriving culture. Had Sam listened to the woman who cared about nature more than her own self, he would not have been forced to leave. I think this documentary does an excellent job at showing how much humans affect nature. We as humans either have the choice to treat nature as our equal or to disrupt the peace. By the end of the documentary, we know that although one option is easier and brings faster cash, the other option will benefit us in the long run, just as much as it will benefit the natural world around us.